Hawaii is part of the US. But why though? Hawaii is a group of islands in the middle of the Pacific, over 2,000 miles from the US mainland. Why is Hawaii one of these 50 United States? Because a small group of foreign conspirators, with military support of the US, put under pressure, weakened and annexed the sovereign kingdom of Hawaii. But not so fast. Until 1898, Hawaii still is its own independent country, inhabited by Polynesians from the Southern Pacific for most of its history. When exactly they settled it remains unknown, because no one brought their diary. Dear Diary, Today discovered Hawaii. The mountains here spit out melted rocks, but that's fine I guess. Beaches top notch though. Unfortunately, forgot my surfboard. For a few hundred years, Hawaii is left all on its lonesome, until 1778, when Jimmy Cook, not a real cook, becomes the first European landing in Hawaii. He doesn't call it Hawaii though, but rather Sandwich Islands, after his aristocratic supporter, not the portable, tasty food item. But all good, cause the name prevailing in the end is Hawaii. Actually, the name of the southernmost island in the island group today usually called Big Island to avoid mix-ups and communicatory masterpieces like Hawaii is the biggest island of Hawaii. That name isn't 100% correct though, at least not in Hawaiian, in which it's called Hawaii. Hawaiian has only 12 letters, but one extra symbol for saying nothing. No joke. This line between first and second I in Hawaii serves as a stop sign in the word, and if you want to pass your driving test, stop sign always completely stationary. So Hawaii, stop sign, E. Hawaii, E. To keep it simple, I'll still be using the English name, Hawaii without a stop sign. One year after his first visit, Jimmy Cook comes around again, but this time there's trouble, which is why he, best idea ever, kidnaps the highest of all chiefs. He pulled off the same stunt on the society islands, and the society peeps quickly fell in line. Hawaiians, however, totally did not fall in line. Instead used our friend Jimmy as a human knife block, and good night didn't keep normal Europeans, and Europeans who sailed over the Atlantic, shot or drove away everyone they found on the other side, then called themselves Americans, from occasionally popping over to Hawaii or even staying for good. 1820, the first American missionaries show up, open schools, instruct Hawaiian aristocrat children on how to behave and lead an emotionally anorexic life, establish the English language and the corresponding script, but most of all, they talk so convincingly about long-haired Jesus and the Bible that they convert big parts of Hawaii's population to Christianity. At the same time, foreign appetite for Hawaiian soil keeps rising. Therefore, land reform. For the longest time, land in Hawaii is distributed and managed feudally from top to bottom in ever smaller pieces. Then reform, and land not feudal, but private. Only Huge chunks of land go to rich foreigners, mostly Americans, who use it to plant sugarcane. Already a good business, but soon after even gooder, because free trade agreement with the US and sugar business goes On top of that, the US get their own harbor in Hawaii, mostly known for a surprisingly unterrible Michael Bay film. Dude, what about the conspiracy part where the Americans go ape? Yeah, and what's wrong with Transformers, stupid? One conspiracy coming right up. The Annexation Club, a bit cynically also called Committee of Safety, is a group of mostly Americans and American descended Hawaiians, representing the interests of missionaries and the sugar industry that is not all that happy with the Hawaiian royal family. So the royals need to go. Even better, Hawaii needs to become part of the US. But we're not quite there yet. First, weaken the crown. For that, they go to the king, slap a new constitution on his desk and say, sign or you get it. They also bring a military unit with them to help get the point across. Hence the name Bayonet Constitution. The king signs and loses most of his power, which the annexation club gladly picks up. Now the question, why doesn't Hawaii fight back? Because it can't. Even in the times of Jimmy Cook it was clear that Hawaiians, in case of conflict, despite their vastly higher numbers, can't do much when foreigners, armed to the teeth like Rambo, shoot everything in their way. Therefore strategy, no matter how dumb foreigners behave, always avoid conflict. Diplomacy, boring but sensible. Hawaii signs treaties with different countries confirming its sovereignty and tries to befriend any and all, especially the British, which is why it uses the British Navy flag as template for its own country flag. And to this day, Hawaii the only US state flag with the Union Jack on it. Diplomacy only goes so far though. Ceaseless presence of foreign warships and meddling in domestic matters, and Hawaii powerless against it. 
And with every concession, with every settled citizen, with every invested dollar, the US has more reason to interfere in Hawaii. So, if there were riots in Hawaii and public order and American citizens and American property were threatened, you'd come and help, right? Yeah. And if we tried to overthrow the government of Hawaii to guarantee law and order, you'd see to it that we wouldn't be harmed, right? Yeah. Cool, thanks. Then comes the obvious. Pretty much no one in Hawaii is all that jazzed about the bayonet constitution, other than missionary descendants and sugar planters. So in 1893, the queen proposes a new constitution returning power to the crown. Just what the annexation club has been waiting for. They march on Honolulu and declare the removal of the queen from power. Only possible because at the same time, US troops turn up to protect the annexation club. The kingdom has no chance of defending itself without risking a conflict with the US, which it could never win. The Republic of Hawaii is proclaimed and in a short period of time, recognized by the same countries that previously acknowledged the Hawaiian kingdom's sovereignty. One might now say, cool, democracy. But no, not cool, because no democracy. Monarchists can't vote because oath on the Republic required, non-rich can't vote because $600 yearly income or $1,000 total capital required, Chinese and Japanese, a good 31% of the population, can't vote because no legal basis for citizenship, and women can't vote just because. It never was about democracy. The monarchy had to fall, not because it was undemocratic, but because an ethnic Hawaiian sat on a throne. When that's all done, there's one last mission waiting for the annexation club. Which is... Well... Obstacle for that, nearly no one in Hawaii wants it to become part of the US. Not even in the US everyone wants that. The US president even urges Republic representatives to restore the monarchy. Queen back on the throne. ASAP. Nah. Okay, bad luck. Gave it a try, but what can you do? Instead, conspirators in Hawaii and imperialists in the US keep pushing for annexation. But wait a second, why does the US even want Hawaii? Two things. One, they see it as their God-given duty to assume power and civilize Hawaii, which is actually not a nice thing to do. And two, cold-blooded economic and military gains. Hawaiian sugar brings in lots of cash, and Pearl Harbor allows for control of wide swaths of the Pacific. And someone else, the newly imperialist-minded Japan perchance, might make a move for Hawaii. So the idea goes, before anyone else snatches it up, let's do it ourselves. Still, five years no progress, no annexation, until 1898. All of a sudden, war with Spain, among others on the Philippines and Guam, and Hawaii super helpful as naval base. Then it all goes really quickly. Congress enacts the Newlands Resolution, and Hawaii, without anyone asking Hawaiians first, officially becomes American territory. It only takes another lean 61 years until, in 1959, Hawaii turns into the 50th of the United States of America. And this time, Hawaiians can even vote on it. One thing I couldn't fit in this video, if we go strictly by the wording of the US Constitution, Hawaii isn't part of the US at all. More on that in my bonus video, exclusively available for patrons. If you're interested, patreon.com slash taipakapa. Otherwise, subscribe, bell, merch. Links in the description, you know what to do. Thank you, goodbye.